unless you know what you're looking for, you might never guess that on this hill outside my train window in southern Turkey is the historically significant but little visited ancient city of Laodicea. So after visiting the nearby mineral springs at Mukale, which you may have seen in my last video, I decided to hop a minibus and give Laodicea a shot. I've told the driver to let me off at uh, Laodicea, which you may uh, will readily uh, recognize in English as the ancient city of Laodicea. I'm told that the bus can take me to a spot where it will drop me, and then it's up to me to walk the half mile or so. Nice to meet you. Now, according to what I've been told, I should be able to walk up this highway maybe a half mile I'm guessing so we'll see what happens well how cool is that lady sitting on the side of the road in an office chair watching over her goats. Not exactly the image I projected for a goat herder. No self-respecting ancient city would have been built on level ground. Had to be on a hill for fortification. And so that half mile I just finished walking from the highway has led me to uh, the hill. Here we go. Confirmation. Ancient Laodicea has two principal claims to fame. It was home to a first century Christian group mentioned several times in the Bible, including rather ominously in the book of Revelation. And later, in the fourth century, it was the location of a church council at which some 60 canons or laws were adopted as part of Roman Catholicism. As you can see there, aren't a lot of people around. Uh, tourists do come here, but not in nearly the numbers that go to Heropolis and Pamukkale. There's just a treasure trove of ancient sites uh, that I can literally see off the top of this hill where ancient Laodicea is located. Um, I can see all the way to uh, Pamukkale and Heropolis to the north. If I knew where to look exactly, I'm sure I'm seeing it, but I can't recognize it, is the ancient city of Colossae, just a, a few miles in front of me. I'm walking down the principal street of ancient Laodicea. And it's really quite an experience in as much as uh, the sun is getting low and I appear to be the only person here. There may be a person or two somewhere, but I haven't seen them. This was such a thriving place starting in about the second century BC after it came under Roman domination. The Romans used it as a stopover in a great trade route that came down through this valley, the greater Meander Valley. 
and Laodicea lies atop a hill, a long hill, that comes to a point, providing sort of a, a center island, if you can imagine that, in a river, except we're talking about a landmass, a valley. So two forks of the valley more or less surrounded the hill and came together uh, at the eastern end of it, which is where Laodicea is located. It became quite a wealthy city, and one can only imagine just by looking at the sheer grandness of the columns that still remain here, that it indeed must have been a place where life was relatively good 2,000 plus years ago. It's pretty obvious that there's extensive archaeology going on here now. And as you walk around the place, you see strewn about ancient stones above the ground as if in, in some uh, random chaotic order, which automatically tells you that there's a lot here that is yet to be uncovered. As my time here runs out, I arrive at the city's theater at the far end of the site, which, to my surprise, is a place of uninterrupted solitude. So I can't tell you how it feels to be here near sunset at this great theater at Laodicea. And aside from two guards, I'm the only person here. There are no lines of people. There's no noise. The only sound I hear are the birds and bees pollinating these flowers. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time from Cappadocia and we'll continue this tour of Turkey. Until then, ciao and peace. <laughs>